The legal framework in which human rights defenders in Ethiopia are currently working in is one of the most restrictive, if not the most restrictive, in the Eastern Horn of Africa region. The Charities and Societies Proclamation, which was passed in 2009, determines the very nature of work which civil society can carry out. It actually says that organisations which receive more than 10% of their funds from abroad, which realistically speaking in a country such as Ethiopia, which is so aid dependent, is all organisations, cannot do human rights work. So what has this meant is that basically most organisations, um, and especially the key independent human rights organisations, have either decided to no longer do human rights work or have had to significantly cut down in terms of scale of their work, regions they are covering, number of staff. I mean, the Ethiopian Human Rights Council, for example, which was one of the main human rights monitoring organisations on the ground, has had to lay off 80% of its staff. And as a result, is obviously having a large impact on the work which they can carry out at this point. Now, on paper, the European Union, individual missions on the ground and the European Commission have actually agreed and have acknowledged the importance of human rights defenders' works in the country. And actually, the Eastern Horn of Africa Human Rights Defenders Project was quite intricately involved in the drafting of a local implementation strategy for the EU guidelines on the protection of human rights defenders. Um, I mean, from the start, though, we do feel that this implementation strategy has not received the political support which it needs for it to be effective and for it to have an impact on the situation of defenders in the country. Now both at a political level we feel that individual missions and the European Commission have not continued to raise the issue of the legal framework which defenders are working in at the moment. So both this proclamation on charities which I mentioned earlier but also the anti-terrorism proclamation which has a very large definition of terrorist acts which can also include writing on insurgent groups and per se be seen as actually supporting these insurgent groups. We feel that the diplomatic community has not continued to raise these issues and to call for the repeal or significant amendment of these laws. But also in terms of more concrete support, the European community on the ground does not regularly engage with inter individual and organisations of human rights defenders who are still on the ground. Um, and this was seen to a certain extent from the beginning of the drafting process of the local implementation strategy. Defenders were not engaged with as much as they could have been. And since then, we haven't seen as much of a regular interaction between the focal point, which is based at the European Commission, and defenders who are still and who have decided to carry on their human rights work but also in terms of other protection measures, for example, issues of emergency visas. I mean, according to the EU guidelines, in certain cases of emergencies, defenders should be given emergency visas. And this is something which hasn't been in practice implemented at this point by the European Union and individual missions on the ground, basically. So what we're calling for is both the European Commission and individual missions to now concretely implement the local implementation strategy. What we're also asking for is for the European Commission, the desk officers working on Ethiopia, to be asking for concrete feedback in terms of how the local implementation strategy is being implemented on the ground. But we're also calling on the European Parliament to try and hold the European Commission to account. This is something which has been endorsed by the, the missions on the ground, and it's also something which the European Parliament should be asking accountability on. And in terms of longer term strategy, we feel that the human rights defenders issue is one which should be at the heart of the new European external policy.